So hi, welcome to the blockchain panel. I'd like to introduce our fabulous <laughs> <laughs> panel members. So on my right, Mr. Izo Kano from Bitflyer. Hello. And on my left, Fujisan from MEFG. So uh, please yeah. welcome the members panel. Do a great applause, please. OK, please get seated. So um, I would like to start off with um, a very basic question about what is your take about this blockchain, or some other people may call it the distributed ledger technologies, with uh, ad additionally with some um, explanation of your current business. So uh, with Kano-san. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm going to actually ask a little bit about question if you know about your uh, the blockchain or virtual currency. So do you have any Bitcoins? Can, can you actually raise your hand? Yes. If you, anybody actually who yes. has a Bitcoin. Anyone who owns a Bitcoin, please raise your hands. Actually, difficult to see, but maybe 10%. <laughs> anybody who knows the difference between the uh, public blockchain and the private blockchain, could you actually raise your hand? OK. Maybe just a few. A few more so hands. So maybe actually so. we should discuss about a little bit more basic. Yep. So, well, the, the blockchain and the virtual currencies and Bitcoin is kind of actually separated, but the, the blockchain is the base technology of Bitcoin as a virtual currency. So, the, there are actually two layers. Blockchain is a kind of new, new database that you cannot delete or update the data. So, if you write a number on it, um, you can call the Bitcoin, and then the, that's going to be a virtual currency. So Bitcoin is just one application of the blockchain. So the people actually separated the virtual currencies and the blockchain. And a lot of actually financial institutions is getting into the blockchain itself and separate that into the uh, um, private blockchain and the public blockchain. So that's okay. the situation right now. Can you touch a little bit more about what you do as a business? And uh, maybe the vision of what you think about this technology will take in like five to 10 years time from now. Yeah, we, Bitflyer, has a two major actually business domains, the virtual currency ex exchange and the blockchain called the MIAB. So we have both. This is actually B2C and this is for B2B. So for, as a virtual currency exchange, we actually provide a service to, for the users to exchange their fiat currencies with virtual currencies, meaning BTC, JPY. On the other hand, this is a purely actually technology that providing the financial institutions or maybe the, um, the other actually uh, business area that this is a new database that people can write, but you can't delete. So those are actually very different, but we provide both. Thanks a lot. So next, heading over to Fujisan. Um, a very large question is about what can blockchain change in the context of banks, but doesn't really need to restrict it to the message about banks. You can talk about any other industries, Steve. Sure. So, oh, OK, so uh, as a financial industry, um, maybe you have to think, you have to uh, separate the um, concept of public chain and private chain. Uh, originally, the public blockchain is a trustless system. Um, a huge number of uh, anonymous participants is supporting the blockchain with the consensus called uh, proof of work. And the, that kind of trustless uh, system is, I think, not suitable for financial institutions. So. Um, Major in financial institutions is uh, running a number of proof of concept right now, and most of those uh, projects are uh, conducted uh, using the private blockchain or consortium type of blockchain. So um, one um, example is that we are now building our bank issued original uh, digital currency, cryptocurrencies called, called MFG coin. Uh, which is uh, built on a consortium type of blockchain right now. And so 
if you have the enough number of participants in the consortium type of blockchain, maybe we can uh, build some kind of uh, brand new business network uh, with uh, maybe other banks or other uh, business companies and maybe uh, in the near future um, uh, maybe uh, the uh, public people can use our original uh, uh, cryptocurrency. Um, just one additional question would be like, do you view blockchain or like digital wallet-based technology as like a basic technology of a bank? Or do you view it more like a productive edge of a bank? Um, so um, the very basic thinking of uh, our vision is that blockchain will never uh, cause uh, major disruption overnight. Mm -hmm or blockchain cannot be a quick fix solution, mm -hmm. or something like that. But, um, and also the research report from Gartner says that uh, in major financial institutions uh, system integration project, the uh, cost of blockchain uh, only occupies the under the 5% of the whole mm -hmm. budget. And also, uh, as you may know, the core banking system is pretty complicated. And uh, replacing the whole banking system with blockchain is uh, one year ago, I could say easily. So it's uh, important that we have to think of that. But uh, after one year, we have <laughs> studied a lot about yes, the so we're getting more realistic. <laughs> and also the, uh, uh, most of the implementation, most of the blockchain products mm -hmm. is still um, immature mm -hmm. in a technical sense. So um, I think uh, partly maybe we can replace or reform our uh, peripheral systems mm -hmm. for the first step uh, with the high efficiency or uh, reducing the cost. Uh, but if you think of uh, replacing core banking system, maybe we need more uh, advanced type of uh, blockchain, or mm -hmm. maybe we need more uh, matured system. Thanks matured a lot. Blockchain. Thank you. Thanks for a great set of questions and um, answers. Uh, my second question will be on about the current challenge inside the industry and the technology. As you, as many of you might have known, there's a very famous issue about hard forking recently in the market. Please um, <laughs> elaborate your thoughts. Well, the, the hard fork is a very actually critical issue as the, uh, the Bitcoin ecosystem. So we as a Bitflyer actually issued a statement at, uh, three days ago that we don't support the coexistence of the two different blockchains. This is just because the, the hard fork itself is a little bit difficult. So now we actually... Um, say the people actually buying selling Bitcoin as a, um, or sending the Bitcoins. This is called uh, Bitcoin Core, the original Bitcoin. But people are struggling with the latency of the traffic. So more and more, more users actually came into the uh, Bitcoin ecosystem. The actually the, the, the time period of time you are receiving the Bitcoin is very slow, getting slower and slower. So there are actually two parties that are supporting one methodology called BCC, and the other, the other one is Bitcoin Unlimited, Bitcoin Core and Bitcoin Unlimited. And the people are actually discussing which technology is better for the past actually two years, but still actually discussing. So the worst case scenario, the Bitcoin Unlimited actually split the chain to make the new Bitcoin called BU, Bitcoin Unlimited, that makes a lot of confusion to the uh, ecosystem because it's really difficult to have two different coins at the same time. Because this is, depends on the algorithm called like, proof of work. That actually, the major 
the majority of the hashing power governs their main chains, meaning the minor coin will, will be actually disappeared. That's the reason why we don't support both chains. So hope their ecosystem actually should discuss about the, these cri critical issues to decide which chain or which actually um, the, the algorithm should be better. So that, that's really actually critical issue at this moment. I think there was a very similar um, issue that happened a few, a while ago about Ether. Yeah. Um, would you like convey your thoughts about what eventually happened to Ether? How, what, how do you evaluate what happened with them? Yeah, Ether is a, a virtual currency of the Ethereum, which actually holds their, um, can handle their smart contracts. Um, that's, that's difficult to um, predict, but that's me actually doing the hard for quite a few times. So originally, the Ethereum was called Ether, ETH, but it split to Ethereum Classic, ETC. Now that's got split to Ethereum Classic Classic, ETCC. So the, the hard work actually happened quite a few times on the Ethereum, which is not ideal. But there's a reason to actually to make the hard work that they had to actually fix the bug, which is called like a DAO problem, DAO. So there must be a reason, but it's kind of actually uh, still under the sort of actually development. So I don't think the Ethereum hard fork is a critical issue in the near future because people recognize this is just their uh, experimental. On the other hand, Bitcoin is different. Bitcoin is used as currency already. Can't really actually hard fork, and if the whole ecosystem actually got go under, then nobody's nobody's happy. Mm -hmm. So this is a time to we need to issue the statement to protect your ecosystem, which has been running for the last seven years, seven nine years, seven eight years, uh, without any fail. Thanks a lot. One question, uh, for, one question for Mr. Taro, Taro -san is that uh, everyone says that uh, Bitcoin is the digital gold, gold, huh? gold, ah, gold. Oh. <laughs> and uh, also, um, but gold is quite useful for uh, real physical industry, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, it is quite uh, very uh, important for uh, electric things mm -hmm. or something like that. So, but. Bitcoin is just a digital data, uh -huh. so, <coughs> but it already has the value, the mm -hmm. real value, uh, compared to the fiat currency. But <coughs> so, in this context, mm -hmm. uh, do you think that uh, Bitcoin is going to uh, secure the value uh, in the future as a co mm -hmm. as a gold? Yeah. Uh, what, what, what is the uh, <laughs> most useful use case for Bitcoin compared to the gold? Okay. So Bitcoin is usually uh, compared with the gold because it doesn't really have the, uh, the value. But uh, Fujis actually mentioned it could actually use for the, uh, uh, as a rare metal, physical um, specifications. Mainly actually used for the uh, CPUs because it has a low, uh, but it's something like um, I don't know, take uh, uh, resistance, uh, low resistance. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, so and also stainless, stainless. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's called actually intrinsic value, but I think the intrinsic value gold itself is much lower. Mm -hmm. The most part of the gold value is supported by the credibility that people can trust forever mm -hmm. since like maybe 4,000 years history that's supporting the value of the gold. So now the Bitcoin doesn't have any intrinsic value. This is a report that issued by the BIS, um, Bank Institutional Settlement, International Settlement, that doesn't have any intrinsic value. So as Fujisa actually mentioned, there's all actually credibility. So if people trust the value of the Bitcoin, that has a value, otherwise it's gone. But for the use cases, I think the use cases in the Japan especially is going broaden. Just because there's actually virtual currency law will be for next week, April 1st, 
That's like the first nationwide virtual currency law has been established. This is actually amazing. This is amazing. So the people can trust more because the government actually supports the virtual currency as an official legal language. And uh, the, 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 the customers should be actually protected based upon the, uh, the legislation. So um, I think the more actually the large companies get into this market, and that there must be some use cases of payments, uh, not only just in exchanging the uh, speculating the uh, up and down, but the uh, um, uh, credit card payments, uh, network. Um, so there's a lot of use cases should support the value of the Bitcoin. Yes, hello. I would like to um, run the same question for Fujisan. Um, I believe you've been in the finance and technology for a very long time. Um, is private blockchain one kind of an answer to the banks in the 10 years time from now? Uh, well, like I said before, uh, it's quite hard to say <laughs> that the uh, current level, level of black private blockchain software lacks uh, most uh, of the functions required mm -hmm. from the financial institutions like us, mm -hmm. you know. But <clears throat> like Hyperledger or Coda from R3 is uh, quite quickly moving forward, and their and their roadmap is uh, quite uh, clear that they are going to introduce more uh, requirements from the uh, commercial companies. So if things going well. And maybe in the near future, maybe those of uh, current implementation of blockchain software will be deferred mm. to, I think th most of software will not be like uh, blockchain, like tech because you know, uh, Hyperledger or blockchain, mm -hmm. uh, Bitcoin blockchain is, the architecture is uh, chained blocks right now, but, uh, from the perspective of distributed ledger, it shouldn't be the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So if uh, things going well and many uh, genius people are uh, investing in those uh, develop, uh, developing a new type of blockchain, and uh, if those uh, blockchain software uh, implements more handful and uh, more practical functions, for financial institutions, maybe it could be introduced into more, uh, not the peripheral systems, uh, into the core, core banking system. But uh, also what we are doing for the uh, developing MFG coins, uh, it's a quite uh, practical uh, trial project. Mm -hmm. But <coughs> what we are seeing is that uh, we are not trying to we are not only trying to issue the digital currency, but also we are focusing on what the um, consortium type of blockchain can change the world mm -hmm. in uh, five to 10 years. So uh, what we're trying to do is that we want to build more decentralized application mm -hmm. onto the, our uh, consortium type of blockchain and maybe uh, in this uh, business network, um, a lot of kinds of uh, business transaction will be settled in the blockchain. And lastly, the payment will be done by uh, our original currency. So uh, the answer is quite uh, very good, but yeah. <laughs> we are trying to move forward. Mm -hmm. Just give me a very short answer. Who do you think is the most core evaluate of change? Is it the, well, it used to be like called the R3, Linux Foundation, Ripple, um, the other guys. Who do you think is the, just the one person everyone should look out for? So uh, you should ask the same question, Carlos. <laughs> yeah, he's going <laughs> to answer later. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, but I, I think uh, um, in terms of the amount of investment mm -hmm. for uh, like uh, money on people, maybe Hyper Hyperledger is quite a uh, uh, good example mm -hmm. of the 
publicly uh, built blockchain. And mm -hmm. ours is also uh, making, uh, they're uh, heading for different way, Hyperledger, mm -hmm. RC, and uh, enterprise Ethereum is also. So, but uh, as I said before, um, if the, um, how do I say, the maturity of mm -hmm. blockchain is uh, start the uh, race mm -hmm. from this year. Mm -hmm. So we have to uh, think of uh, uh, what's going on. Great answer. In the future, yeah. Got it, thanks. But also, short <laughs> answer. <laughs> Twist the, uh, it can be bit of a layer, but. It's kind of difficult to actually mention about your uh, competitors' products, yes. but <laughs> we see the Hyperledger, obviously, um, R3 Coder, um, possibly other actually uh, blockchain products. Uh, uh, we see actually still under the development because mm -hmm. um, it's kind of unstable sometimes um, and um, not really actually um, a lot of financial institutions are adopting that as a main system yet. Um, so it has pro cons. Even like Miyabi is considered as the fastest blockchain in the world, but you can't really separate into the uh, different components like the uh, Hyperledger. Can't really actually swap the uh, consensus algorithm. Maybe this is actually the benefit of the uh, Hyperledger, um, the Hyperledger store. Now we have the there's a lot of actually securities is that the single failure of point is very important. So this is called like um, um, SFOP. Uh, if the one component gets an attack and the whole system will down, will go down. We should avoid ha to have the uh, SFOP and the MIAV doesn't have any SFOP. So that's, that's good. So we are trying to actually make some sort of actually Ferrari, which is really fast and uh, um, reliable, and only for their enterprise, not for their uh, consumer level, because we are just focusing the most secure and uh, uh, fast and reliable system. Um, try to sell Miyabi to the large bank like you, <laughs> and hopefully you can adopt that kind yeah. of systems. So do you have any plan to submit the Miyabi to Hyperledger or Ethereum, followed by Iroha from Japan? I mean, do you have any plan to make open source your software? No, we, we don't have any actually um, plan to actually make it to open source because we s also actually see their uh, pro cons on their, between the open source and the closed source. Open source is very visible, it's good. But also actually also open the vulnerability Closed source is difficult to actually detect your uh, hacking point because it's closed. So we actually keep the source code closed, but we actually open your APIs to the users, like financial institutions. OK, um, we are up with our time. We will take continuous questions at the yep. cafe later on. But um, I think that totally really uh, wrapped up our conversation. Um, thank you for the two of you for this wonderful conversation. And uh, may, may I have your applause for this wonderful panel. Thank you so much. Thank you.